Hi, I'm Nate, a technical marketing manager with Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And today I'm going to show you how to use the Red Hat Insights Image Builder to define and build Red Hat Enterprise Linux to deploy to your cloud provider. Now in today's example, we're going to be using Google's Compute Engine. If you want to see how to do this with Microsoft Azure or with Amazon's AWS, you should check our other videos. There's examples on how to do that for those two providers as well. For today's demo, you're going to need a few things. First, you're going to need a login for the Hybrid Cloud Console. So head on over to console.redhat.com and set up a free account if you don't already have one. You will, of course, need a Red Hat subscription in order to run Red Hat Enterprise Linux. You can go ahead and get a free developer for individuals subscription, or hopefully you've already got a subscription through Red Hat. The other thing you're going to need is some information to give Image Builder to tell it where to provision your image to. And for that, you're going to either need your Google account ID, which is just, say, the email address that you log into Google with, a workspace ID, a Google workspace domain, or your uh, service account through your, uh, your Google workspace. All right, so let's hop into the hybrid cloud console. I'll show you how to, how to define an image and how to tell it to push to Google Compute, and we'll go from there. All right, so like I mentioned, we're going to try to deploy an image from Red Hat Insights Image Builder to a Google Compute platform. Now, Google Compute Engine, I think, is the name of the, uh, the actual VM service that runs on Google Compute. And we're going to walk through and show you how to build an image and deploy it directly to Google Compute. So to do that, uh, from the I'm, I'm logged into the Hybrid Cloud Console here. Obviously, if you're if you're looking at a login screen, you're going to want to log in. It's not that complicated. You've got that. We're going to go to Services at the menu at the top here. Now, uh, underneath Inventories, you will find Images. You want to click on Images. Now you'll notice there's a little star here. You can favorite these different services so that they show up under your favorites. Um, I wanted to be able to show you the actual interface here. So here we go. All right, now it's going to bring us right to a list of images that are already defined on my account. Now, obviously working for Red Hat, there's a million images already defined here from all the other people who have <laughs> who have have tested out Image Builder. We're going to make a new image though. All right, from Image Builder's wizard, right? So we're going to go create image and we have some choices to make. First choice we want to make is what we want to deploy, what version, what release of RHEL we're going to deploy. We can pick RHEL 8 or RHEL 9. RHEL 7 is not in the list because it's not, it's, it's getting close to the end of its life cycle, so we focused on 8 or 9. You can also pick uh, development releases if you'd like, CentOS Stream 9, CentOS Stream 8. We're going to pick RHEL 9 because why not? This is a brand new deployment. Why not start with the latest and greatest supported version of RHEL? Okay, now we need to click Google's Cloud Platform. And you can see that there's options here for AWS, for Microsoft Azure. We can even deploy to a disk image file like a VMware VMDK or a QCAT2 file. And these are great for if you have on-premises compute and cloud compute that you'd like to have the same image deployed for both different versions. Now, obviously we can't automatically deploy to your VMware infrastructure. So what that'll do is it'll give you a disk image you can download and then import yourself. All right, or bare metal, you can do an ISO file. So you can then pop that onto a USB stick or something, plug it into a physical machine and, and deploy there. But like I said, Google, Google Cloud Platform is what we're gonna do. Hit next. Now, there's lots of ways to tell it how, you know, what account to deploy to. Um, in this case, we're gonna just use my Google account. However, if you have a service account a Google group or a workspace domain or cloud identity domain. You can use any of those instead. For the sake of this demo, I'm gonna go, I have a very basic Google compute account. So we're just gonna put in my Gmail address. Okay, and then we're gonna hit next. The next thing we wanna do is decide whether we're going to automatically register the system when it's deployed or whether we're going to register later. If you would pick register later, you will still have to subscribe this system to Red Hat but, you know, this way you can do it through your own automation processes or however you want to handle that. I'm going to say automatically register and I'm going to pick an activation key. If you don't have any activation keys in your list, it's because you haven't defined one in the customer portal. You're going to want to go to access.redhat.com, go to your subscriptions and create an activation key in there. Okay, now we hit next. 
Now, file system configuration. This is where we get to lay out what partition table we want our RHEL system to use. Now, if you're deploying on a cloud provider, you might ask, why don't I just pick Red Hat Enterprise Linux from the list of images that are already there for my cloud provider? Well, that doesn't let you customize the file system. In some cases, especially if you're in an industry that requires you to be compliant with certain uh, security standards, you may need some of your partitions to be separated. For example, you may want temp to be separated so that it can't fill up your disk or because it has to be non-executable. You can't really do that on a basic cloud image, but you can do it with Image Builder. So we're going to select manually configure partitions. We're going to define a couple of partitions here. So you can see root, the root file system is already here at 10 gigabytes. That's a fine default. We're going to add home. I don't know. Let's make that five gigabytes. Like I mentioned, temp is a big one that a lot of people care about. So let's separate temp out, make that maybe two gigabytes. And I don't know, what about var? That's a pretty common one that people want to split out into their own file system. And let's make that one 10 gigabytes. Okay, now let's hit next. And we can define what packages we want to install on our RHEL system when it's deployed. So a lot of people, you know, you're going to want to, you're going to want your favorite visual editor, perhaps in case you need to log into your system and, and manually edit files. So let's just look for Vim. It's a good one to work with there. Now in this list of search results, you can select multiples if you'd like to. And then when you click the arrow, it will add them all. We're just going to do Vim minimal which will bring in Vim and all of its dependencies. Now, it's not going to show you, the, show you the dependencies here, but it's going to pull them in automatically when the RPM is installed. Now, speaking of multiple packages, let's say, let's say we search for a package and everything in this list is something that we want to add. It shows you the whole list here. You just click the double arrow instead of the single arrow, and it'll put everything in there. Okay, so now you see Vim minimal from our first step is there, and everything that included the word HTTPD is now included. Obviously, on a production system, you may not want to do all of the things from HTTPD, but it is an option if you find that that, uh, that works out better for you. Okay, now we're going to hit next. We're going to give it a name. So I'm going to be really creative here. We're going to call my image Nate GCP. And this is, this is the name that's going to show up in the uh, images list that I showed you earlier, the inventory. And then it gives us a chance to review our, uh, our options. So we can see, you know, where are we sending it to? What content are we installing? What's the file system layout? Things like that. If you notice anything in here that you wanted to change, you can then go back to any of the previous steps. Like, say, we want to register it differently. Go back there, and we can change the registration. We're happy with everything, so we're going to go back to the review. And we're going to click, click Create Image. What this is going to do is it's going to submit it to the build queue, and the Red Hat Insights Image Builder will start to build our image. You can see I've got a number of them in the list already here, including some that are ready to go. But what we're going to do for now is I'm going to cut out the video, and we're going to come back when our image is ready to, is ready to deploy on Google Compute. So I'll see you in a few minutes. All right, so now we have our images defined. We've submitted them to Image Builder. It puts them into the queue for, you know, the build process to actually occur. This takes anywhere from a couple of minutes to, well, maybe up to 10 minutes or so for these, these builds to complete. And then depending on which output we chose, it'll send it off to our cloud provider. Now, if we chose an option that gives us just a local image, you can then download the image at the end. Uh, but if you chose your cloud provider, it will do the, the process of automatically pushing it over to your cloud provider. And as I'll show you in just a minute, right in the, in the interface there for Image Builder, we can take an action on that image on our cloud provider, which is a pretty nice integration. All right, so here we are. The build has completed. You can see here with the nice green check mark that my, that my image is ready. Now, what we're going to have to do, there's a few steps involved in actually deploying on Google Cloud Platform's Google Compute Engine. From the image details here, we're going to want to grab the project ID, the image name, and that's going to go into a command that we have to run over on our GCP Cloud Console. Okay, so I'm going to grab those right now and put them into my command that I have saved here. So the project ID is... Red Hat Image Builder, that doesn't change, that's the same every time. 
The image name, however, is going to change with every image that you have built. All right, so I've got that copied into my little scratch pad here. We're going to go on over to my GCP dashboard. All right, so from the dashboard here, we need to go into the console uh, within Google Cloud. So the first thing we need to do is we're on VM instances here, which is fine. That's where we need to be. That's where you run essentially a, a virtual machine on GCP. We're going to click on the Activate Cloud Shell button. And what this is going to do is it's going to, it's going to provision us a shell on GCP. Okay, so this is basically my cloud shell on GCP. There's a command we need to run. I'm going to copy it out of my little scratch pad here and paste it in here, and then we're going to do some slight changes to it. All right, so this command you enter within the, the cloud shell here, and what it's going to do is this is going to tell Google Compute to, def uh, to deploy a new instance, right? So let's step through what we're doing here. G Cloud is the basically an application that's available to you from their cloud, you know, from this cloud console. Compute tells it we're going to work with a compute resource. The resource we're going to work with is an instance. So instances is a subcommand there. We're going to tell it to create a new instance. That's what the word create is for. We're going to give it a name. New rel instance is my super creative name. The image project. So this is the project we got from the, the image details from within Image Builder. That's Red Hat Image Builder with dashes in the middle. Then, of course, the name of the image. And this, again, came from the image, um, the image info, the image details that came out of Image Builder on the Hybrid Cloud Console. Is that Composer API, yada, 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 with the UUID. We're going to tell it what zone to deploy in. And the zone, in this case, is US East 1C. Okay, we're going to hit Enter. And what should happen is it should deploy us a new instance, and it should show up in this list. So let's give it a moment. Your console may show up and ask you to authorize the console to make changes, right? In my case, since I've already done this before, it didn't ask me again. Okay, so there we go. Now we should have a new instance up and running with the information that it's given us here with the internal and external IP address. Now I think, is there a refresh button here? Let's hit the refresh button and it should show us a list in the VM instances. There we go. There's our new rel instance right there should be set up and ready to go. All right, so there you have it. Uh, we've now created a, uh, an image using Red Hat Insights Image Builder. We've pushed it off to our cloud provider. And as you've seen in the demonstration here, we have lots of options for the output that we'd like that image to either be sent to or give us for download. The power of this tool is that you can take those images and run them on any platform. Right, So you can push it to any of the big three cloud providers, or you can download them and run them on your own local environment. Or if you have a cloud provider where you want to build a custom image to send it out to, download that image, make your customizations, and send it up to your cloud provider. So this goes a long way into defining your standard operating environment so that you can you know, keep your standards across lots of different platforms. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks. Thank you.